Aber deswegen, das ist... Ich meine, ich, mein, ich könnte dir auch nicht erwarten, dass wir jetzt hier Regeln kochen ziehen. Ähm, so. Komm ich jetzt. Öffnet sich hier der Link auf dem Handy, öffnet der sich nicht. Das ist mit Server Error. Dann musst du mal gucken. Ich hab's doch da auch. Ah, okay. Um. Also das sieht aber auch jetzt alle so aus, als könnte man das alles zusammen machen. Also. Hm? Die Glasschale oder, oder die Rote? Hm, ja, nee, nee, ich glaube, die weiß. Die weiße ist die gute weiße. Du, ich habe jetzt kein Kilo Hackfleisch gekauft, ja, sondern ja. habe jetzt irgendwie 600 Gramm nur für uns weiß zwei. Das ist nicht das. Ah, sie ist ähm, auf dem Backofen. Auf dem Backofen? Nee, nicht im Backofen, in der Spülmaschine. Ja, in der Spülmaschine. Da hinten, ähm, denke ich, reicht aber die andere, weil die, 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 die mehrere Dürre und die runter, weil diese Formale, welche ist größer, die oder die andere? Die? Glasschale. Nein, diese, diese, diese oder die, die andere? Die ist sehr klein. Und die oben drüber? Also, die schreiben ja rein, wie groß die sein soll. Also der Reis wird extra gemacht. Ja, ja. Und der kommt eben da nicht mit rein. Also. Oval Open Proof durch 23 mal 33 cm und, und 6 cm tief. Okay, das ist es jetzt nicht hier. Also das haben wir nicht tatsächlich. Okay, dann nehmen wir doch irgendwas. Na gut, in der letzten Zeit ist der Typ auch mal mehr, dann ist es irgendwie. Das ist ja trotzdem noch an. Ja, aber die reden ja von Kilo. Ja, ja, eben. Genau. Und wir haben ja nur ja die Hälfte. Ja. So. Und also, wir brauchen. Also, das Brot, Milch habe ich gekauft, obwohl du noch welche hattest. Ah, ja. Zwei Onions. Die kann ich ja schon mal schnell. Ja. Turmeric. Das ist das alles schon. Das heißt, schon bei den Turmeric kann man ja noch. Also, das heißt, ich nehme mal eine große Onion. Ja, gut, wir brauchen ja relativ viel Milch. Halt ich habe ja noch mal nicht gekauft. Ja. Ja, ja, nee, deswegen war es ja gut, dass du nochmal gekauft hast. Das Einzige, was ich jetzt wahrscheinlich nicht habe, das ist ähm, die Rosinen. Weil du hast Rosinen auf dem Einkaufszettel stehen, die ich habe ich gerade gesehen, oder sind noch welche da? Nee, wir haben keine. Deswegen hatte ich eigentlich. Habe ich ja dann auch ja gar nicht draufschreiben, du kaufst ja welche. Nee, und ich bin davon ausgegangen, wir haben ja sowieso immer welche da, dann habe ich jetzt keine gekauft. Ah, okay, ich meine, gut für mich, schlecht für dich, haben wir da nicht mal mehr so Termin oder so. Ganz, gar nicht. Tut mir 
Ich hoffe, ich verzeihe es mir. Aber es ist genügend anderes Süßes drin. Das wird so, das wird so knitschesüß, das Zeug. Aber ähm, ja, jetzt habe ich aber auch nicht nachgedacht. Ähm, wir hätten natürlich auch von uns die ab. Ja, aber da stand eine halbe Tasse. Und da habe ich gesagt, ich will doch nicht unsere gute, selbstgemachte Marmelade da rein. Aber da habe ich nicht gedacht, wir brauchen ja keine halbe Tasse. Wir haben ja kein, kein Kilo Fleisch. Also ähm, gut, habe ich auch nicht zu Ende gedacht. Aber mach nichts vor. Irgendwas. Das, das. Und da krabbelt ein Tierchen drauf rum. Mhm. Nein, die Kleinen, die wollen mich überhaupt nicht begrüßen, Herr Gell? Merkt das schon. Was denn? Wird es warm, oder was? Die Thermostate sind ja auch noch, oder? Die Thermostate sind ja auch noch. Wenn du die Thermostate gebraucht hast. Ja, jetzt nicht in jedem Zimmer. Nein, nein, natürlich nicht, aber da, wo es warm werden soll.
Ähm, ich habe jetzt übrigens doch der Mama vorhin angeboten, dass ich am Samstag gucke, ob wir noch Opernkarten kriegen. Also, wenn du mitkommen möchtest, dann musst du es sagen. Ich meine, ob ich das online hinkriege, was ich nicht genau habe. Ich weiß nicht, ob ich Ich rede ja schon mal im Büro, weil es da mal was zu den Füßen aber jetzt. No, mein Gott. Kannst du auch über diese Werbung hier äh, in Facebook und äh, Instagram und so für Falkenthal? Was? Falkenthal? Nein. Ah, hm? ja. Hast du eine neue, no. neue Fahrradtasche gekauft? Ja. Start-up, die, also ich kriege hm. so viel Werbung von dir. Vielleicht okay. Vielleicht aber. Okay. <lacht> Und äh, oh, eigentlich ist es gar nicht so schlecht, weil also, relativ groß, relativ groß. Und du hast halt das Riesengürtel, der mir wichtig ist. Mhm. Du hast hier eben die Schienen mal aufgebaut. Mhm. Mhm. Und du hast aber auch einen Rucksack. Den mache ich jetzt wieder weg. Heute. Aber dann drückt das da nicht. Nein, weil du hast ja hier, du ja hier so ja. gepolstert. Mhm. Und den steckst du, wenn du den brauchst. Mhm. Äh, ja, ja. Und? Und das ist was da. Ich bin wurscht, oder? Ja. 60 Euro. Mhm. Ach, das ist ja günstig für solche ja. Dinge. Und äh, mir sehr wahrscheinlich aus, was auch immer jetzt besteht. Dann Schluss. Lang. Ich bin zufrieden. Hat wenigstens, also mein Alter Lassen. hatte ja immer auch nicht hier so eine Tasche und sowas. Hast du schon ausprobiert? Ja, ich habe sie jetzt heute schon okay. gestern. Äh, ja. Aber hast du nur einen gekauft, oder? Ja. Ja, eigentlich wollte ich ja nur die eine ersetzen, wo das Ding da schon kaputt war. Ich habe mir gestern den Seven Swans angeguckt. Seven Swans? Ist das heißt? Ich habe gar nichts mehr gesehen. Ich bin auf dem Sofa eingepennt, bin dann irgendwann keine Ahnung, um die Elf wieder aufgewacht und habe gedacht, so, jetzt geht's mal ins Bett. Dann habe ich euch noch geschrieben und dann habe ich mich. Gut. Ja, ich muss schon ins Licht, weil das war echt. Ich mag das. Früher habe ich das ja immer geliebt. Wenn ich auch so weit gekannt bin, das fand ich irgendwie immer schön. <lacht> Aber in der Zwischenzeit mag ich das nicht mehr so.
Das meine ich jetzt auch nicht, aber das ist wenigstens. Ja, auch machen können. Das auch wenn das, das Landstraßefahren ich, äh, eben nicht so langweilig ist. Und, aber, äh, ist Der Juror war jedenfalls der Wiki-Favorit oder wie man mhm. Aber das hat doch Ziel. Oder doch nicht? Weil das hat mir nicht auch mal geguckt, aber das hat doch unser Ziel tatsächlich beschlossen. Ja. Das hatte ich schon doch für mein Sinn nicht entschieden. Ja. Das war jetzt schon viel für mich mein Sinn schon. Das kann man nur mal ändern. So den Reis, den machen wir mit auch mit Kokuma und mit gelben Reis kriegt. Angeguckt.
Hi, everybody. Welcome. Cheers. Yes, 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 yes. So we, yo, welcome to the Bibuti session. Okay. Mastership mm. Berlin. Mm. Tell us a little bit. No, we'll wait. I think we'll just wait a few more minutes okay. for people to join. What's the time now? It's already four minutes past, um, but there are some people, but perhaps some people that just finished, we can just give a minute or two for them to finish. Um, and to join. Um, but if anybody wants to say anything or talk so long, feel free to unmute your mic. This is an interactive session. Yes. Um, so we really want to engage with you. We're going to show you what all the ingredients are and what we're making and what we're doing. Um, but please feel free to unmute yourself. We've got the speakers on here so we can hear you. If you've got any questions, put it in the chat um, and then we'll answer them as we go along. So while we're waiting, if you're cooking with us tonight, get everything out, get everything prepped, um, get everything ready to go. Um, and then I'll start explaining in the next two to three minutes. So feel free to unmute yourself, talk so long, um, and then we'll get going. Yeah, we can't see you. Hopefully you can see us and hear us. <laughs> What is <laughs> what, Ophelia, what was your highlight of today? Um, I think my highlight of today, um, aside from the discussions on growth in partnerships, I enjoyed the, the, what's this, the study abroad fair yes. um, earlier today. The videos that were shared were very, very informative. I think it was the video uh, from Finland where we were actually started a discussion about the happiest, the happiest country. I think it's the happiest yeah, country. country in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know that. So it was very, very insightful for me. And I think um, the, the approach to their um, marketing towards um, um, international students study abroad, it gives an overarching view on the country first, yeah. building up on, on the country and then gives an, uh, uh, an overview of the university. So it fits in well. So you get yes. a, an, over, an overall look at where you will be going, where you'll be studying, and then you know about the facilities and, and offering of the university. So I think it is, it's a good view at, at looking at how I, I approach um, marketing my um, study abroad to students. Yeah, that's a great, like yeah, that. that is both a great. Story. Good. So I think we'll get going. Yes. Um, for those of you that are there, I'm not sure how many people are there, but hopefully you're ready to start cooking. So disclaimer from the start, I am no professional chef. I am just a colleague from the international office. Um, so what actually happened is a few weeks ago, we had a, a similar session with um, our um, colleagues um, and partners from overseas. Um, and we, as part of a quail project, we did some cooking um, and we did different, um, different recipes together. And we did a a bit of a babuti cook-off, and then we decided to do this live tonight with you. So what we're going to do is to get going. So number one, just so that you don't forget, is to switch on the oven. Um, so you can put your oven there to 180 degrees Celsius. Um, perhaps, Lydia, if you can just switch on your own oven. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're, we're in Lydia's house. Um, so thank you, Lydia, for opening your house. It's a pleasure. Um, it was the most beautiful one that we could find. Um, so we're ready to get going. So the oven is on and it's getting warm. Um, so make sure you do that um, once you get going. Second thing that we're going to do immediately is to start the rice. Uh, that's generally the one thing people forget. So what I've got here in the pot is I've put some normal white rice and some water um, for it to get going. We'll add some. And then what makes this um, rice special to serve with the babuti is to put in some turmeric. So for those of you who didn't know how to make yellow rice, um, you add turmeric to the water. So we'll just do that. 
we'll oh, just smells delicious. <laughs> just add some turmeric to the water and all you need to do with that is um give it a mix um although it's just floating at the top now and um it doesn't look like it's actually um mixing as the rice cooks later on uh, the rice will become yellow so this is very traditional for us um, to make yellow rice with our babuti um, you might wonder as we start where babuti comes from so babuti is a very traditional south african dish um, it it was originally um, or oh, it's one of South Africa's national dishes. I think everybody would know Babuti and kind of has eaten it before. Um, so it origins actually from Cape Malay. It's a Cape Malay origin and from the Cape Malay community. So what happened is um, people that came from the Dutch East India Company came to the Cape um, and then they all, um, oh, and the Cape Malay people started making um, this. So where their name Cape Malay from is the people from Indonesia, the Malay people from Indonesia, they actually came to the Cape region, and that's where it came from. Um, and but nowadays the Cape Malay people all mostly speak Afrikaans and some English, and that's where um, Babuti actually came from. It's just the origin and where it comes from. So tonight, actually, one of the spices that we're going to use, we decided um, we are there's different curry spices in here and lots of flavor, but we got the Cape Malay curry, which is something quite special and unique to South Africa. But of course, you can just use normal curry so let's start this, going I must, um, sorry to interrupt, yeah, yeah. i must admit this is very flavorsome and you can just really smell it says it of bird spices with all the traditions of the cake so this is really a lovely mixture that you chosen for us tonight great so let's get going i'll quickly run through all the ingredients for those of you who don't know what or is not cooking with us so you can see so we've just got some butter and then we've got some onions that I've chopped into, um, um, me? that Lydia chopped into pieces for us earlier tonight. Um, then we've got some garlic that you can just crush into pieces as you see on the menu. Then on the recipe, we've got the Cape Malay curry spice. We've got some turmeric. We've got some ground cumin. We've got some coriander leaves, some mixed herbs, some bay leaves some raisins or sultanas white bread we've got our ground minced beef we've got our chutney and this is something that's very very traditional in south african um is our mrs ball's original recipe chutney um it, this is the uh, recipe, the original recipe um but you can use any peach or apricot chutney um that you have um at your disposal in your country then we have have some apricot jam salt and pepper uh, and milk and then for the topping we've got some eggs and milk but you all have the recipe already on our website in advance and um, so you're welcome to um, continue and follow with us so i think it's ready we're ready to get started let me just figure out here here we go so we're going to start by placing some butter in the pan so you can get going with that. Lydia. Um, yes. Your stove is making funny noises. I think it's the operator and not the stove. <laughs> so. Okay. Is it all ready now? It should be all good. Great. Um, just while you preparing the butter, I've got some other colleagues here that just joined if they would like to to grab a seat and would like to say hi. Alicia is here. All the way across the town, <laughs> drove very far. Alicia, maybe sit on this side. So all that I've done now is I've added the butter to the pan so that can start melting. Um, so you're welcome to do that. And then you can immediately add your chopped onions to the pan so you chop the onions or if you're chopping it now i gave you some time in the meantime to chop that um so please just add your onions to the pan and what we're going to do with the onions is we are going to let it cook um, and get translucent so just um, move it around a bit um, in the pan if you need to add some more butter you can um, but what we want to do with the onions is make it cook 
not completely soft because we don't want it to go brown later. So you can just let it go until it's translucent. I must say those are really well chopped onions. If I must Thanks, say. Lydia. If you're ever looking for another job, perhaps you can become an um, onion chopper. Maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> No, I want to ask you stuff to fry about. <laughs> yeah, those onions are not no joke. But I want to ask you why are you not using olive oil and why are you using butter? I just like using the butter because it's much more flavorsome. Um, oh. And it, so this is a salted butter, uh, unsalted, sorry, butter. Um, but um, it just adds more flavor to the dish. Oh, um, so okay. it's quite a traditional way of doing it. But of course, if you don't have butter and you're just using um, olive oil, that's also perfectly fine. Or, of course, if you're lactose intolerant. Or if you're lactose intolerant, like I am, um, uh -huh. you just I also take one for the up. team. <laughs> and you can stay like And the browning of the onions are much better with Of course, yes, yes. And it smells delicious. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I wish you can smell what's happening already. Uh, okay. So I hope everybody is um, chopping the onions and frying them. Perhaps we can hear from some of the yeah, colleagues um, that's please. cooking. Um, can you share on par? Are we going too fast? Um, do you need some more time for chopping? Can I have absolutely no one? idea um, who's cooking with us or how many people are cooking with us. So if we are going too fast, um, let's let us know. But it is quite um, a basic recipe and easy for us to follow. So perhaps our colleague Cohen there at the back, uh, is everybody okay? Okay. Can you see some people cooking there? Have they got their cameras on? Uh, switch on your cameras and join us. Okay, okay. So some people are taking notes and making it later. Is there anybody that's cooking live with us? Oh, Julia. Oh, yeah, tell us. Show us and, and tell us is it. Um... <laughs> Can you hear us when we unmute, unmute ourselves? This is Nikki from Germany. Sorry, we can't. Uh, can we, just get Can we put the sound louder? Sorry, Julia, just repeat that if you don't mind. We can't hear you over the onions from He's next to um, Hasni. Because they did not know of Okay. Hasn is up. Yeah, the Hasn is up. So we um, <laughs> have an interesting uh, predicament. Um, we are cooking on a gas stove and the gas just finished <laughs> so um this is this is not planned um uh, usually as you all know when we host something at Salambash, it is planned to the t um this is something that we can't plan because we don't know uh, the magnitude of the amount of gas that left um so we are just changing the gas um but perhaps in the meantime um alicia what um what is your highlight of this afternoon's panel? Well, um, I definitely have to, have to be honest, I got a lot of food for thought. It was really, really good to get the input from the different context, and I really appreciated the, the interactiveness also of the session. And so that is really a, a great way for me also to engage with. Uh, start, I, I hope you agree, but I feel like we are to keep this virtual CM quite interactive and engaging. Uh, and that's also what I really appreciate from the partners that they are also open and, and uh, uh, conversing with us easily, uh, even though we are doing Great, that's awesome. And um, just in terms of, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> we, we just give us a little bit of a pause. Um, Robert, I see your hands up in the meantime. Maybe you have something to say. <laughs> I, I, I'm just asking if you if you have provisions for um, our colleague Sarah, if you have a vegetarian variation of the bubuti. So there is actually a vegetarian option made with lentils. So if you are vegetarian, um, you can make it um, 
lentils. As Matt has said there, it is on uh, the website. And um, hopefully you are cooking um, the vegetarian option with us. Um, but uh, those of you who don't eat meat, you could also have a, a meat-free mince. Um, so you do, the colleagues in Germany um, got a meat-free mince once, and then they uh, made exactly the same recipe, soya mince exactly. Um, so they made it in that way. Kansu, with us, sorry for the slight delay. Perhaps people need to switch off the onions if it's still on the <laughs> if it's still on the stove um, because um, it might get too brown. Um, this was a bit of a. I saw. I told you, Lydia, that there was something wrong with your stove because <laughs> I heard the and I also have a gas stove. Thank um, you, Ben. I'm so sorry about that. Luckily, Lydia had an extra gas bottle. Um, it would have been very awkward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay. a little bit used. Okay. Is the echo when he's doing his best? Are we? Is it on? Perhaps you two can just. Okay. Okay. We're live. We're going. So let's. Um, there we go. I think um, I think all of us are a bit um, rattled now. <laughs> Perhaps we'll just have a glass of wine uh, in the meantime. Okay. Mm. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we prepare for load shedding, and that's why I have a gas stove. But obviously, I need to um, check gas levels in some other way. So we have a saying in Afrikaans: uh, "Boer maak a plan." Uh, a farmer makes a plan, um, and we definitely <laughs> just made a plan. But I can hear it cooking now. So let's um, let's get going. As you can hear, um, it's family time. Uh, Lisha's little. Baby boy is also here in the room, um, and you might hear him a bit in the background. He's very excited about all the lights and cameras, um, but um, let's get going. Okay, those of you who are cooking with us, we're going to move on to the next step um, quite immediately. Um, so what you can do now, if your onions is brown by now, which it should be. Show us the onions a bit. You can see, oh, it's only, so you can see it's not quite brown yet translucent we don't want it to be too soft um at this stage um but so your onions the oven bit, exactly the exactly yeah. as we okay. continue to cook and we're going to add the minced meat now the ground beef and then it's also going to continue cooking so first thing that we're going to add is your crushed garlic um so you can add that into your pan um and just give it a little bit of a stir And then we're going to add the ground mince. So the recipe calls for a full kilogram. So as you can see here, it's quite a lot. We like our meat. Um, so we'll add, we'll add that in. There's still flames. So we're, we're, we're still going. Anyone? Any answer? I just want to see what you're doing here. No, you can definitely use different um, beef. I'll add that to you. Um, perhaps we can put it on that one. Yeah, I just think this setting is important. Okay, there we go. Um, now, Alicia, you can definitely use other mints. We just decided to use um, the beef mints tonight, which is the most traditional one um, that we use usually. Um, but you can use pork ground mints, you can use lamb ground mints, um, whichever one. So the base for this um, is, is the mince meat, um, and you can use whichever one you prefer. So just kind of stir it around nicely um, so that you can get all the mince nice and brown. Oh, it's not so lovely. Yeah, maybe from, from my own experience as well, um, I grew, grew up in the Aussie capital of South Africa. Mm. So we are more used to, to making this recipe. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we should make a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Next uh, year, there's a note to it. <laughs> but yeah, so we're more used to, to making this recipe also with some ostrich mint, uh, which is a more leaner, leaner yeah. uh, mint. Um, I think it's quite widely available in some European countries. It is uh, exported quite quite often mm. as well, but yeah. the traditional recipe is, of course. Mm. Yeah, but I do think that the ostrich will. Um, I think I do think that the ostrich will um, go well with the 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 um, curry spice. I just maybe want to remind our colleagues because some of you were here for the briefing at the start that the sound is on my uh, lapel. Um, so when you're talking, just speak loudly so that the colleagues can hear us. Okay. Um, but Lydia, I have a seat. You're making me nervous. <laughs> so you're making me nervous. Um, I'm sure. Then. <laughs> I hope everybody is still on board. Um, so at this stage, you should have your onions brown, garlic, and then you should be adding the ground mince and have that cooking down. I should have my notebook and pen close to me. This is my first time where I need to take notes. Yeah. Well, you have a recording, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We practice this every Friday night from now on and bring us some on Monday. <laughs> So while this is going, one of the things that you can do right from the start, but we'll do it now as we continue, um, is to add the slices of bread and milk together. So we've got some bread. You can use um, two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using about two and a half slices of bread. So all that I'm doing is I'm adding the bread to the bowl at the bottom. Um, so you can see I've got it here. I've got my milk prepped. Uh, thank you. Um, so what we're going to do, and this is the this is the strange part that you are maybe not used to, um, and the reason for this goes actually back in the day when people made this, um, they didn't necessarily have the money to have as much minced meat, so they used the bread and the milk to bulk up the food because oh, wow. it's quite bulky. So what you're going to do is you're just going to pour, you're going to pour the milk. Thanks for that. Pour the milk straight over the bread because we basically just want to soak the bread in the milk um so you can perhaps add a teeny bit more milk in there um because the bread slices are quite big and then you, so it, it soaks up the the milk so the bread soaks up the milk so make sure that you put enough milk if there's too much milk don't worry about that because we're going to squeeze out the excess milk a bit later so just um add a little bit more milk in there because these are big slices um there we go that's enough thank you that's enough <laughs> alicia you can maybe just put that down there okay I've been, okay I've been so the bread is soaking in milk so if you forgot about that step like i did you're supposed to do that one first um just remember to go do that one now so my rice is cooking here and now that we've got flames under the um the pot um, and if you put in the turmeric into your rice water, you would see that it's bright and yellow now. I don't know if you'll be able to see my pot, um, but you can see there um, that it is, it's bright and yellow. Maybe the camera can zoom into that. No, it can't. Yes, it can. <laughs> but you can see that putting that little bit of turmeric in there completely changed the water. So at the start, when we put it in, um, the I think you must zoom out again because <laughs> I can see myself on the screen. Um, so when I put the turmeric in the water, it just floated to the top. And everybody always thinks there's something wrong with it. Why is it not mixing? Yeah. But it, when it starts cooking, it mix, mixes. And then you'll see that the, the rice actually become bright and yellow. So that is quite um, a key component to this dish. So um, I know that my mom, I don't know if it, it's because the bird is quite a traditional dish for most people. Um, you all have like a family recipe. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So my mom always puts in some uh, raisins in here. So um, I haven't cooked um, yellow rice <laughs> before. Um, uh, Does your mom put in the raisins right at the start? Oh, because that's what you. I'm also wondering now. I usually put it in a bit at the end, okay. but now that you mention it, if you put it in now, it's maybe not soft. at the start, it might be too soft in, but if we put it in now halfway through, it might be okay. So I'm just going to take a handful of raisins, never too much raisins. 
Ouch, ouch. <laughs> and I'll just drop it in there. Uh, that's probably why I always do it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. So my ground meets is almost done. Um, so if you're doing this, um, you should be on this level. So those of you that are back home, you should be on the point now where your ground meets has all gone nice and brown. So all that's in here so far is my onions with the butter. Um, I've added the garlic and I've added the minced meat. So once it's starting to brown, and once you can see that it's not pink anymore, and that it's brown, um, you'll see there it's nice and brown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to always talking loud. Perhaps I shouldn't. Then that's why you guys sound so loud, because I'm talking so loud. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm thinking we, we put all this flavor just waiting to go in there. So exactly. When, when do we do that? From the audience. We've got a question here from the audience. We just have comments. Raisin makes it a bit sweeter at least, says Robert. So yeah. I assume, Robert, you're not a big um, yellow rice fan then. <laughs> so, Robert, um, what I want to mention about the fruit in here. Um, and we're going to get to that. You're stealing my thunder here because I planned it for a bit later. But yes, um, in this recipe, in a few minutes, we're going to add the raisins. We're going to add the chutney and we're going to add the apricot. So for a lot of people, that's quite strange. Why do we put fruit in with minced ground meat? But remember that we put apricots with a lamb dish or with a chicken dish. Oh. And it brings the sweetness to the dish. So we're going to do exactly the same with this. We're going to add the raisins, add the chutney, and add the apricot. because there's a strong curry base in this. I think that could also complement the Exactly. So this is a spicy and sweet dish. Yeah. Um, and basically, the, the, the minced meat that we're doing now must be so flavorful that you would want to eat it on your own. But you'll see at the end what the trick is and what makes the booty special. So if your ground minced beef is cooked, more or less, like mine is now, um, we are going to start adding the flavors. So to answer your question earlier, Lydia, the reason why we're waiting until it's cooked now, because yeah. once I start adding the curry flavors, it's going to become yellow and all spicy, oh. and I'm not going to be able to see that the ground mince is cooked. So now that I can actually see that it's all cooked and that it's all um, brown and no longer um, pink, yeah. um, we're ready to add the spices. Wow. So let's get going. First, I've got the Cape Malay curry. So, mm, that smells so good. Smells so, like home. <laughs> so, our house is going to start um, smelling so nice now. So, that's the first part. Secondly, oh, yes, Robert the Shiraz. We're having a, um, uh, what are you having? This is having? a pinotage. So, this is the Bayer School of Pinotage that we're having tomorrow night. I decided, I decided to, to do a taster tonight. <laughs> mm. But thank you, Robert. Um, definitely necessary Shiraz to keep well. up with the Shiraz. Um, I'm going to next add the turmeric. The turmeric is the one that's going to make it nice and yellow. I'm going to add the ground cumin. So I added one and a half teaspoons of the Cape Malay curry powder and then one teaspoon of everything else. One teaspoon of turmeric, one of ground cumin. I've got some coriander leaves, one teaspoon of that, and then one teaspoon of mixed herbs. So quite important, if you don't have all of the spices, you don't have to add everything to it, as long as it's got a nice curry taste. Yeah. Um, and would you say you can, I'm like that, and that's probably why I'm not a good cook, is I sort of go by feeling. I need exactly. To go exactly one and a half teaspoon. I think that's the rebellion. So I said now one teaspoon, but I actually just took the bowl and I added <laughs> in at the start. Okay, um, I'm just checking because that's maybe why my baguette never comes up. And I think what I'm going to do just now anyway is I'm going to taste it, and if I want to add more, I'll add more. Um, exactly. So, get you a spoon. so that I've got a spoon somewhere here. So we've added all the curry powders. Now I'm going to add some of the um, raisins in here for that sweetness. Oh, um, so we add, we add it to yeah. So we add it to the rice just for the the sweetness and the niceness. But we add it in here too. And then I'm going to actually put um, two or three just of the plain bay leaves. I'm going to crush it and I put it in here. We only put some at the top for the flavor, but I literally just put a few, I crush it and I put it in here. 
Mm, and it just brings the flavor. But now comes the most important part of a babuti. And this is what brings the, the, the flavor. You say I'm in my element. I watch MasterChef Australia and MasterChef all the time. Um, it, is, it comes on here every single day um, for an hour. So I literally watch it every single day. I realize I'm talking loud again. So, Sorry, they can just check the rice. Yes, if it's, oh, it's okay. Is it okay? Yeah, no, you can leave that. Okay, should I Perfect, okay. yeah. There's no raisins? Oh, the there is raisins, okay. yeah. So, chutney. So, it does say on the recipe, how much did we say on the recipe? A half a cup of chutney. But this is one of those things that I just like to add because it brings the nice flavor. <laughs> yeah. um, we put chutney on anything we put it on a hamburgers we put it on literally people put like um some ham and and chutney so i'm gonna add uh, they say half a cup so i think half a cup is more or less half a bottle or so so i i more or less half a bottle and then because I know that some of our partners know this from coming to Stellenbosch in South Africa, but I'm interested to, to know if any of um, our partners can get um, Mrs. Paul Chutney um, overseas. So I know there's some South African shops, but maybe if you want to share or want to uh, put on your microphone and tell us um, if you can get Mrs. Paul Chutney readily available. Or any other form of chutney. Yeah. Um, but before you do that, I just want to quickly add everything else in and then we can have it simmer a bit. Um, the next thing to put in is the apricot jam. So the apricot jam is important that it be apricot. When we did this the other night, some people put in strawberry jam or some other jam. Uh-uh, don't do that. Put in apricot jam, about half a cup, so half a tub. Um, but it, it might seem a lot, but the apricot jam is sweet. So it brings the sweetness to the dish. And um, in South Africa, we like everything sweet. Um, so that's why we, we add in the sweetness. We'll work from home. Oh. That is the dog that we will probably destroy after this. <laughs> okay. So what we've done now, we've added the, um, we've added everything. So. We started with the onions and the garlic and the mints. I've added all the spices. We've added some of the sultanas, the bay leaves. Um, and then we've added the oh, chutney. Delicious. Show the people how lovely it looks. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll but get there. <laughs> um, and then we've added the, the mints. So if your, if your mints is too um, not saucy enough, if it's too dry, you can definitely add more um, more chutney. You can never not have enough chutney. That is um, the the point of this recipe. Then some um, oh, yes. pepper. And if I may, I noticed that some of the other spices you put in were already ground. But you're grinding the pepper fresh. Doesn't make a difference if you don't ground. Or how, uh, of the other spices or... No, uh, it, I don't think it makes a big difference. Um, I probably shouldn't put some salt because I did at my house yesterday. And one of the questions was, how much salt do you take? So I've noticed that salt is probably a bad thing, but um, ouch, I like it salty. <laughs> so um, there we go. So your ground mints should almost be done. And as you can see, my rice is all puffed up um, and probably almost done also. I can see now that the sultanas, the raisins that I put in, um, have now come to the top. So perhaps, yeah. Lydia, if you yeah. can take the rice back um, to the butler's pantry and then just rinse it off um, and bring it back um, so that we can okay. um, serve it up later. So okay. just rinse it with some cold water, okay. um, but it's definitely ready. And as you can see, um, from the camera, I don't know if you can see all the way. Uh, let me see there on the screen. Yeah, you can. It's bright in yellow. So, yeah, quite nice and bright in yellow. And you can see the raisins in between. So you're welcome to take that for us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So my mince, my ground mince is almost done also. So now that it's um, nicely flavored and cooked, what we're gonna do now, um, and this is the second last step, is we're gonna come back to the bread. So you can just pass the bread. So you remember earlier what I did is I put the bread, um, I soaked it in milk. So you can now, um, you wash your hands in advance, so that's fine. You can just grab uh, the bread and just squeeze out the extra milk. So as you can see, I'm literally just squeezing the bread out. It's a bit, this is a gross part. Uh, and you can just break it up in a dish. So I'm squeezing out the milk. It's really appetizing, not reflective of bad spice at all. <laughs> it doesn't feel that great, um, but it's going to taste great. So this part, you might think that you want to leave out this part with the bread and the milk. But this is a really, really, really important part because it bulks up. It bulks up the, the whole dish. Just going to rinse my hands here. But it bulks up the, the whole dish. So don't leave it out. Refill where you can just take that for put it away. So I've taken the bread and um, it says beat it in. So what it means is it means just mi mix it through so that it's well mixed and broken up. You don't want a chunk of bread in your food. So you have to now continue to mix this until you don't realize that there's bread in the mince anymore. Um, but this is the last step uh, before the food will go into the oven. So yeah, just continue to, to mix it well. Um, those of you that are cooking at home, hopefully you are still on par. Um, if you are running a little bit behind, don't worry. Um, this is the very last step. Uh, after this step, we will be putting the things into the oven. So. Oh, that is really, really delicious. Okay. Almost there. I like the reference to Shit's Creek on folding it in. <laughs> Thank you, can't you? <laughs> Is that a bad reference? <laughs> 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 Was that a good reference? I will send you the episode. <laughs> it is. I don't, I'm, I don't know about you, but this is looking really, really, really nice. So um, we are almost at the end. Um, yeah, now we're going to get to what we're going to serve. Once you put it in the oven, we're going to get to what we're serving and how we are serving that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just give it a little taste, making myself at home here in Lydia's house. Um, so I just want to taste um, if it yeah, tastes curry enough or with ah, oh, there. I think we should also get a taste and put it back. Mm -hmm. We also want to taste please. Um, before you taste, mm, it's nice and curry. I personally think it needs some more salt. Oh, yeah, it is, but I'm making the food, so um, <laughs> we'll add some more food. It's personal. So, um, if you want to yeah. taste that, yeah. quickly, <laughs> it's hot. Um, well, the smell is really lovely. I must say, when you bring it close to your mouth, it just like oozes flavor. And um, definitely, Vanna has done a good job in folding mm. in the bread because you can't see it in terms of the texture. So, oh, word, Vanna. I'm going to um, really ask the camera if we can come closer um, and then we can, or should I bring the food to you? He's coming closer. <laughs> um, just so that you can show the colleagues exactly what it looks like um, and you can see how it's all folded in. Um, yeah. So can you yeah, yeah. Okay. well enough? Yeah, perfect. So I, I feel like I want to lift it up and show you <laughs> so you can see the mincemeat it's nice and yellow um the bread is all mixed in nicely um and it's nice and sticky you can see that it's almost sticky and that's due to um all the chutney and jam that we put in but i must uh, say ben, in tasting the, it, that little bit it's you have all these different things comes together really lovely and i do think i know you're very fond of chutney meat too but i'm always worried that it's 
I must say the combination between the spices and the chutney is spot on. Well mm. done, I must say. Um, I'm looking forward to the final, final product. Yes, and I made this um, a few weeks ago for some of my friends and I invited them. They couldn't believe how nice it was. And then I told them, I can't believe how nice it's either. Because <laughs> it was the first time I made it. Um, but... Um, I think because it's a traditional recipe, some people expect it to be a complicated recipe. Exactly. Um, yeah. And with a lot of family secrets, secret ingredients, even out and then the rest of your family think that it's um, so, I mean, uh, definitely, I think Bernard has showed us that it's a very simple recipe to cook with a very complex mm. palette. Yeah, really? a complex palette, but I do think that when you um, work with curries, and um, um, specifically not so much into a very hot curry, but definitely a spicy curry, and I think that's why the Cape Malay curries are actually really good for my palate. Maybe it's because I was born and raised here, but um, it's, it's really nice and sweet, and just that flavor that comes through and it's it's a little bit of a sweet and sour mm. really so it's definitely sweet and spicy i would say sweet and spicy. um so normally a curry would be very um strong and people don't like curry but because of all the apricot and the chutney it's nice and sweet so i'm just going to give it one more taste <laughs> mm. Mm. perfect Kansu is coming over for dinner at your house. It's Kansu coming over. So Kansu, um, I don't know if you remember, but we had a meeting a, a few weeks ago. And um, you told me exactly where you are staying in the estate. Um, and I'm staying in the same estate, but on the other opposite end currently. Um, and we uh, just signed a new contract for where I'm going to be staying from 1 December. And I'm actually going to be driving past your house every single day on the way to my house. Uh, and we will be living uh, less than 50 meters from each other. So, he's the one that told me. Okay. Um, we've got a question here from um, Niku. Um, Elama, what is the best, drink, best to drink with a babu? White wine, red wine, or something sweet like a pour? So, Niku, um, um, some people say you drink white wine with fish. Some people say you drink red wine with meat, icing you drink red wine with everything. Um, so I'm well, definitely the wrong person to ask. But I, I see a country actually answered here and he said the Shiraz. So yeah. thank you, country. Um, definitely um, no. next time. <laughs> Kansu, we would say that you can drive here in Somerset West and it's uh, probably about 40 minutes drive, 35 minutes drive. Okay. And by that time, the food, actually, we're going to tell people, we we're going to tell them to put it in the oven now for 35 minutes. So. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. So those of you that are cooking with us, hopefully yours is done too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it into a flattish oven dish. So it needs to be, it, oopsie, we'll turn it around now so you don't see that. Um, it needs to be thick enough um, or deep enough so that you can move the, the mincemeat around, the curried mincemeat around. Um, but um, it can't be too deep because it is not going to be um, thick enough. So what you're going to do is you're going to just put it in the pan. You don't have to put any butter or oil or anything in because there's enough in the mince. And you're just going to flatten it out in the pan. So you can press it down. It's quite important to press it down a little bit um, because we're going to put a milk mixture over the top now. Um, so if it's pressed down enough, the milk mixture won't go in. But believe it or not, um, even if it's not pressed down, the milk mixture will stay on top. It will float on top. So you don't have to, to do anything. So something that you can do. Um, Sorry, we've got another wine um, suggestion. Another here. wine suggestion. Alicia, can you read it? Um, Bantu is enjoying his dinner with Malbec. Oh, oh. which Malbec? Uh, uh, Dornier is one of my favorite Malbecs. Um, I don't know which one you're drinking. The white wine. But we are drinking Bayeshka Pinotars because that's what we are tasting tomorrow. <laughs> so, so this is actually for tasting for tomorrow. So what we um, will replenish, will replenish. <laughs> so um, I just want to show you this part. Um, so perhaps if we can zoom into this again. As you can see there, it's an oven dish that's not too thick. You can see here 
um, that I can, it's more or less a half a finger um, to the thing so that you can put the milk mixture over, but it's all pressed down. So this part you can actually do in advance. Um, so if you're getting guests over for dinner and you mm. want to prepare all of this um, in advance, oh, okay. what you can do is you can do this part up to this point in advance and you can put it in the fridge. You can even do it the night before and that you put it in the fridge, it. you put it in the fridge and it's done. What I would suggest you don't do is the milk mixture that we're going to do next. Um, you don't do that in advance because we don't want milk standing around yeah. Uh, yeah. and we want guests to remember the night for the yeah. right reasons and not the wrong ones. Yeah, I think it's so, responsible to do the milk. Exactly. The before, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just add the milk mixture and the eggs. Um, so if we can it's get... More of a custard mixture than a milk it's, mixture. A, it's a custard. So we get the milk from the fridge. Thank you, Alicia. Very fancy in a box. Um, we didn't put that into... Well, the cow is in the backyard, so I thought I'll um, do the box. So what you do for the custard mixture at the top, you take about 300 ml of milk. As you can see, it's about. Um, and we don't really worry too much about how much. And we put it here in, um, in the bowl. We'll just add the rest for love. Um, um, I'm seeing here that Hannah Halfrick um, commented that she is going to uh, enjoy a Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Stony Brook. Oh, nice. Very nice. So what I'm going to do next, um, and this is the very last part, take two eggs, two large eggs. Um, we've got nice free range eggs here because we even like the chickens to walk around, but obviously use any eggs that you've got. So two eggs, 300 ml of milk, and we're just going to mix that. So we don't have to beat it um, so that it's, it's um, like it doesn't have to do anything. It just needs to be mixed. Exactly. Exactly. So what's, what's going to form the, the, the base of this is, um, is the egg milk for the mix, and we just mix that there. And all that we're going to do with this now, this is the very, very last step. We are literally just going to pour it over. And it will um, just go over the top and lie on the top. So you would think now if you're doing this at home, this is so weird. Um, I can see some of the mince mixture sticking out the top. That doesn't matter because what does eggs do? It bakes and it's going to bake on the top. So this is going to nicely bake. What we're going to do this put two or three bay leaves um it's for garnish yes but also the flavor will pull into it so we put three or four um, bay leaves on the top and then we've got the egg mixture going. and that is it so we're going to open our oven that's preheated well by now because we've taken more than the chance and a minute and we're going to put it in okay in the oven Okay. So this is going to go to the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. Um, and what we're going to do quickly now is to show you what we're going to eat with it. Made our yellow rice um, with raisins. So as you can see here, it's bright and yellow and it's got some raisins. So nice bed of the yellow rice uh, on the piece of um, on the plate uh, with the raisins in. And then something you can do with it. And there's a lot of different flavors you can put with it. You dish up the, uh, the babuoti on top. You can put some sliced bananas, more fruit, or you can make a sambal and Lydia is just going to do that. Sambal is also very traditional and all that it is, it's cut. Throw in onions, take one onion, cut it, wasn't on your recipe. And then also one tomato. We actually use three tomatoes. Three tomatoes, a lot of people, people yeah. yeah. All the behind the scenes camera crews that's here and the sound people and the technical crew and everything so you just move it together and then you need to actually add some red wine vinegar to it some bowl only tomato red wine vinegar Oops, sorry <laughs> i just put some vinegar all over lydia oh, lovely that will go great with my perfume um there we go and you can put a lot. I like a lot. Yeah. As you see, I like a lot of everything. I think that's enough. Yeah. And then um, the key ingredient to, to the sambal is also then to add some sugar 
um, because it okay. makes it a bit sweeter. And because of the red wine vinegar, you don't want it to overpower. So you can put at least like two or three spoons of sugar. So the sambal is something that you put on the side. And this is a suggestion also that even when you make curries, normal curries at home, um, to put it, to make a sambal and you put it on the side, it just breaks down the curryness of the curry, the strong, the, 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 the strength of the curry. Um, so you just take some tomato, onion, um, some red wine vinegar and sugar. You just mix that together. Um, and then we've got some. I like to put in some coriander. So that just breaks to me or just adds a little bit to the freshness. And then salt and pepper. You can pass me that. Okay. Or you can. Oh, there we go. Salt and pepper. <laughs> okay. So this sambal, you can put anything else, um, all your meals. Um, so you've got your rice. And for tonight, we've got our rice with um, raisins. We've got our sambal on the side. And then we've got our babuti. So it's going to be in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. And obviously, we're not going to just wait for it to bake. So um, uh, we've got one that we've made earlier today. Um, and you can put it in the oven as long as you want. Um, uh, what will happen is the top will crisp. So you can see here, um, this one we left in a slightly a, a closer to 40 minutes, um, but it's not that bad. Um, what happens is it crisps at the top mm. and the milk and the egg mixture becomes a nice um, consistency. So perhaps if we yeah, just get sure. a plate, then we can um, show our guests at home exactly what it will look like. Okay, there we go. So as you can see there, we've got our babuti, we've got some of our yellow rice, and um, and then some some bowl on the side. And there you have it. We've got our traditional South African babuti, some yellow rice, and some some bowl on the side delicious uh, and you can now go and wait for it to finish in the oven if you made it yourself um, and enjoy uh, it with your family if you didn't make it tonight we expect you to make it during this weekend coming up um, and to send us a photo so that we can add it onto our social media and um, our partners that also join that um, but yeah that is it thank you very much Lydia for hosting us here um, in your house you're welcome and thank cheers you. And if any of you did um, tonight with us we would like you to send a photo to my email address or sun.ac.za and then we will show tomorrow before we start the program we will like to show everyone the different types of babuti that was made but yeah um, enjoy the babuti of 40 minutes or 40 minutes if you want a crispy Stop and then we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us for cooking with Master Chef Werner. <laughs> so, yeah, thank Cheers. you for everybody for joining for us. Sometimes. And we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Enjoy the rest. Was meine?